Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous Saturday, March 2nd, 2013 here in the drought-plagued wasteland of South Austin, Texas. Saturday morning, you know guys, I just thought I was going to take a day off as a doomsday prophet and environmental alarmist and the chronicler of the downfall of civilization and sit out in my big trash bark lounger out in front of my trailer and just look through the alternative weekly newspaper here in Austin, Texas. The closest thing probably that the state of Texas has to a lefty alternative perspective to the mainstream media. The Austin Chronicle. Uh, but guys, wh who was I kidding? Thinking that I could do this. I think this is the second time. The last time I did this was November. And uh, this, it, it, it doesn't matter where I go, guys. It, it, it's, it's everywhere. Um, ramp material. Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to uh, just... I think I'm going to pick out three stories from here. So this rant is going to be about everything from the budget cuts that went into effect on Friday uh, to the plastic bag ban to those grocery, those plastic grocery bag bans that went into effect here in Austin, Texas yesterday and about uh, alternative filmmaking. We're getting ready to have this big film festival, the South by Southwest Film Festival, and my review, not so much of the movies, but about my review of the film festival itself. So anyone who wants to stick around and uh, listen to me rant about budget cuts, uh, plastic bags, and the alternative film industry is welcome to sit around and, and listen to me. Uh, of course, you know, I think this was the same rant I was making from this rock here on our lefty newspaper on page five, the, the, full, the full page four color ad for this planet eating monstrosity called the Circuit of the Americas, this giant racetrack that they built out there on some farmland about 20 miles east of town. And uh, you tell me guys, uh, is there going to be any conflict between the, the these lefty environmentalists uh, and the ad revenue generators here at the alternative weekly newspaper when uh, about their reporting of one of the biggest ecological boondoggles uh, in Austin's history the past 20 years, you know, continually taking out these full page four color ads. I will let you draw your own conclusions on what kind of honest reporting we can talk, uh, we can expect from the uh, from the Alternative Weekly. So let's now go to the the news page. The news page where probably like so many other weekly newspapers, including the one at your town, is where they put some, uh, you know, lefty up there ballyhooing about all of the the budget cuts that took effect. So this fellow uh, by the name of, I want to give him uh, credit or blame where it's due. This is, uh, well, oh, Michael King. Okay, this is what Michael King, government by panic. How bad are our politics? Pretty damn bad. Uh, and so what this is, is his review of how these budget cuts that went into automatic effect on Friday are affecting the state of Texas and the city of Austin. I will just uh, read the first several paragraphs. Okay, here is how the sequester will look like in Texas. 
And again, guys, uh, you can you better believe that if you live in the United States, there's a similar story in your town, in your state. Okay. According to the White House estimates, Texas will lose roughly $68 million in federal funding for public schools, jeopardizing about 900 and 30 teacher and aid positions and directly affecting 280 schools and 172,000 students and another 51 million dollars will be cut from educational support for children with disabilities dismissing 620 teachers aides and staff uh, college students will also suffer. 4,700 will lose direct financial aid. Another 1,450 will lose work study jobs. Uh, here is 4,800 Texas children will lose their Head Start or early Head Start services. Uh, now, I won't go into a rant. My, my dear sweet ex-wife was, she might have just lost her job yesterday out there in San Francisco since she was the one of the head honchos and head start out there. Okay, on the environmental side, Texas will lose eight and a half million dollars in funding for clean air and clean water protection. <coughs> <coughs> I'm going to lose another $2.2 million for fish and wildlife protection. No, you know, no surprise. Well, I, I guess I should just make my comments, you know, uh, as we go down this list. And you probably have a similar list where you are. You know, about about the education. Guys, you know, this is where, uh, and, and certainly, you know, for an, an, an enviro, enviro Nazi like me, the environmental cuts. Guys, it hurts. You, you know, what can I say? Uh, it's ugly out there. Obviously, I agree with this lefty that uh, none of this had to happen if, if these damn rich people, you know, meaning these multi-millionaires and these billionaires themselves, and more importantly, these giant multi-billion dollar corporations, which has moved their headquarters uh, out of this country to avoid paying taxes. You know, if these guys were taxed like average Americans were, uh, none of this would, would be happening. And, and, and obviously, I, uh, I agree with that, but we, we can play this blame game until we're blue in the face, and guys, it's happening. And who's going to take it in the shorts is the, is the teachers and the uh, people out there, you know, trying uh, to, to rein in the environmental destructiveness of these damn multinational corporations. And... Uh, and, and guys, it hurts, but it's just a, you know, it's a sign of how this country, this economy, and everything else is starting to crack up. These, these are the chickens coming home to roost. And, and as these chickens come home to roost, and as these, and, and, and as these teachers and these environmentalists, you know, get the boot, you better believe that these that these corporate interest uh, meaning the corporate interest not to get taxed uh, they're going to be sinking their talons uh, you know more and more deeply uh, they're, they're I guess their boot heels you would say in Texas uh, as all of this starts to ramp up and fall apart so from the, the lefty let's go over here Okay, to the next one talking about uh, the, the military, the cuts in, uh, in military spending. 
Let's see, perhaps public education and the environment are not among your highest priorities, so how about defense funding? All right, loss of $275 million in military support in Texas will translate to the loss, to the loss of 52,000 civilian Department of Defense jobs. This is the military industrial complex. This is the quote civilian side of that uh, of that military industrial complex. While all of these these, these quote private defense contractors. Uh, so right here in Texas, 52,000. Uh, pink slips will be coming along. Uh, Army base operations funding will drop $233 million in Texas. This is for Army bases and the Air Force will lose another $27 million. Numbers that are making the defense officials nervous about military readiness military readiness down the line. Guys, I, I, I don't want to put words in Michael King's mouth, but my prediction is he, he is one of these people who in other, you know, in other articles, my guess is he is like me, uh, always screaming about this swollen military budget that has gone completely, totally out of control. Well, guys, who do you think are, are making all of these bombs and, uh, and, these, and these real weapons of mass destruction? And make no mistake about it, which country on this planet has more weapons of mass destruction uh, probably than the rest of this damn planet combined? Who do you think is building these? Amazingly enough, who's building these are human beings. Uh, and so right here in Texas, 52,000 Texans are <coughs> <coughs> building these weapons of mass destruction. Well, guys, it's ugly out there. So, uh, as this overswollen military gets chipped away at as it needs to be, people are going to lose their jobs. The war machine is the single biggest economic machine with the possible exception of the, of the car, uh, of the uh, auto machine. Well, of course, those two are all tied so in bed together you can't, you can't pull them apart with a crowbar. Uh, Guys, it's ugly. It's called, it's called growing pains. These 52,000 people should never have been hired. Okay, and my guess is that they have been hired in, in the past 10 or 12 years. I'm taking a wild guess. So there's more, there's more chronicling of the uh, of the collapse of this con of this economy, uh, that's just Texas, of course, and there are no measurements yet for the economic ripple effect of abruptly yanking all that money out of the state's economies in the sequester's seven-month duration. I'm not even knowing what he's talking about here. That he thinks this is going to end in seven months. Overall, the national job loss estimate is roughly 700,000 people. Perhaps a half point in unemployment, another blow to a still very fragile national economy. And so this is uh, there's more evidence that this economy is going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, and 
You know, this, this is news from the shallow end of the doomsday prophecy pool. But it's bad news for the economy here in this country and on this globe is good news for, uh, for the planet. You know, because at least here in Texas, there, there's 52,000 people who are going to be spending a lot less money at the, uh, you know, buying all of this planet-eating shit. So speaking of which, let me, uh, going from uh, paychecks to consumers, uh, let me find this article. I thought I had it flagged. So the next one, we're going to take jump, which isn't quite as big as you might think, uh, from uh, budget cuts to plastic bags. And this article seems to have completely disappeared in the bag. The question you won't hear in Austin anymore, paper or plastic, hallelujah. So what also went into effect yesterday in Austin, Texas, and hopefully in your hometown, if it didn't go into effect now, hopefully it will be in the future. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. Uh, plastic bags, you know the plastic bags I'm talking about are these one-use grocery bags, the, these grocery store bags, these Walmart bags, good God almighty have been uh, have been made illegal here in uh, here in Austin, Texas, and then I will tell you about uh, let, let me tell you about the story first, and then how the response to this, which is which would almost be hilarious. Okay, Austin may not be the first city in Texas to ban single-use bags. I'm amazed to hear that it's not the first, but it is the first to get thumped with a lawsuit over the brand new ordinance. The day the lawsuit goes into, actually a few days before the ban on plastic bags went into effect, uh, the city of Austin was getting sued. I'll tell you about uh, that in a, uh, a, a minute. Uh, well, let me get right to it. I mean, there's, there's only so much you can say. The only thing you can say about the end of the, to these damn plastic bags is hallelujah, praise Jesus. So, it's what's going on with this lawsuit. Okay, the Texas Retailers Association on Monday, so four days before this ban on plastic bags went into effect, the Texas Retailers Association on Monday filed a lawsuit claiming that Austin's bag ban violates a section of the State and Safety Code, which prohibits <coughs> municipalities from restricting the bags for solid waste management purposes. And well, it, you know, and that's exactly what the purpose is, as it should be. Uh, you know, this, this, this is absolutely, let's see, the lawsuit states that retailers will be harmed. Okay, this is these big grocery stores, Walmart, Target, all the usual suspects, according to this lawsuit, the retailers in, within the city limits of Austin will be harmed because their customers will head to stores outside of the city limits to do their shopping. Yeah, so it, it, it's just good, you, you know, that's right. People because they can no longer get these plastic bags when they're buying their planet-eating shit are going to get in their gas-sucking cars and drive. And this is every time they go to the grocery store or to Walmart, they're going to get in their car, 
drive to the uh, to a grocery store or a Walmart outside of the city limits of Austin so they can get plastic bags for their groceries and their planet eating crap. There you go. Oh boy, and they're also claiming that in-city stores will likely pass on increased costs to customers to offset the cost of, of implementing the law. <coughs> I don't know what that, that's about. So the, these, so these stores no longer have to pay for all of these bags, these millions and millions and millions of bags. I, somewhere in here they said how many bags that they actually use in Austin. Okay, then of course they have a response to this uh, ridiculous lawsuit. Uh, switching to cloth bags or bags that can withstand 100 or more uses is not all that difficult. Some, some lefty environmentalist uh, named Schneider saying here, quote, it is only in the last few decades that we have been accustomed to getting these free plastic bags. As new bag laws have taken effect in other countries and in cities across the U.S., people adapted and moved on with their lives, she, she said, quote, that is what we are going to be doing here in Austin. Yeah, get over it, guys. Get your damn cloth bag. What a sacrifice to save this damn planet. And as they point out correctly uh, in this article, that paper bags, uh, you know, when you're trying to compare the environmental effects of paper versus plastic, uh, when, when it all boils down, they're, they're both uh, just as bad for different reasons, but they're both essentially just as bad. Get yourself a damn a couple of cloth bags, guys. You little whiners. I cannot believe the amount of whining going on uh, 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 about this argument. You know, from where I am sitting, I, I am probably looking at, at two dozen of these things. It is the biggest source of pollution here in Williamson Creek and every other creek and river in this country are, are these damn white plastic bags that, that, you know, every time it rains and the creek comes up, all of this garbage uh, getting all tangled up in the creek side vegetation. Good God Almighty. Uh, I could go on, but let me switch gears here. So the, the cover story about uh, this week's Austin Chronicle is about the upcoming South by Southwest uh, film uh, showcase. And I don't know how many films are coming, what the grand total is. Uh, that are coming here next week. But anyway, they, they highlighted 137. I don't know if, if, if they gave a synopsis of all 137 of these films or not. Uh, so anyway, but they, whether or not it's all of them, they chose 137 to highlight. And so you got to understand what what this the South by South <coughs> West Film Festival is about. You know, guys, who this is are, are, are all of these alternative films. It's the it's the beautiful people. You know, it's the it's the progressive people in the know. It's it, it's where if you're cool and don't want to go and listen to all of that Hollywood you know, hyped up crap 
This is the best of the best of the independent alternative films, uh, a hell of a lot of which are documentaries. You know, it's a split between uh, quote fictional films and, and documentaries. The the cream of the crop of the indies, which you know should uh, should go right hand in hand with people who read the Austin Chronicle. So anyway. Guys, I, I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna have to use the F word. Uh, so I started going down the list, and it was approximately number uh, about number 55, about halfway through uh, this list uh, of these documentaries before I found the very first one, the first time that any subject that I talk about here from this rock shows up on any level. I, I, I mean, and, and, and I talk about a pretty wide variety of, of alternative subjects on this rock. Uh, but mainly, I, I, you know, I am an eco-Nazi. I am an environmental alarmist and a doomsday prophet. Uh, I have 800 rants talking about stuff that you probably won't find in the mainstream media. And so I was saying, okay, here we are. Maybe uh, we can get some of these indie filmmakers, these documentary filmmakers in the alternative film industry. So about halfway through, and I'm going to have to use the F word here because it's in the title of the, 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 the title of the, the documentary uses the F word. So I'm going to count to three, and then I'm going to use the F word. If you cannot stand to hear the F word, just, uh, just fast forward for about one minute. Okay, so this movie is out of this documentary out of Poland called Fuck for Forest. All right, Berlin's Fuck for Forest is one of the world's most bizarre charities based on the idea that sex can save the world. The non-governmental organization raises money for the environmental cause by selling homemade erotic films on the internet. So there you go. That is the first time you will see the, the word environment mentioned in the, in the South by Southwest Film Festival. First time you see it, fuck for forest. And then guys, if they had stopped, I continued on. Look at this. Uh, I continued on. And if it weren't for the last three, the last three, I, if they had stopped at 134 documentaries, the only time you ever would have heard mention of anything to do with the environment on, on, on this planet or any of the other subjects that I'm talking about here on Humpty Dumpty Drive, if they had stopped at 134, you never would have heard it mentioned again. One out of the first 134. 133 to one, but here we go. Number 135, Tiny, a story about living small. Again, these are documentaries. One couple's attempt to build a tiny house with no construction experience raises questions about sustainability and good design, the nature of home, and the changing American dream. I am a big fan of tiny houses. So that, that was number 135. Uh, and then finally here, number 137, number 137 out of 137, buried in the bottom corner, Christmas Without China. This is a documentary comedy 
about serious issues we have with our stuff. Christmas Without China follows Chinese immigrant Tom Chia as he challenges, as this Chinese guy challenges his American neighbors to survive the Christmas season without buying any products made in China. Good luck. I bet that is a comedy. So there you go. Out of, uh, out of 137 independent alternative filmmakers, alternative to the, to, to the usual shit that is being glorified in Hollywood. It, it's just a little bit to the left of it. For about 134 out of 137 of these alternative independent documentaries coming to the South by Southwest Film Festival, if you sit through 134 of the 137, you will never hear, you will never hear the, uh, any subject that you're going to hear on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, which is why uh, my prediction for the total number of people on this planet who even started this rant is going to be about 20 and my guess is maybe two people out of a planet of seven billion are still listening to me now so i'm going to wrap up this rant and head back into this spectacularly gorgeous day in austin texas and say bye guys <laughs>